Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on May 24th, 2023, recorded on 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to jump into today, including a hybrid storm alert for the Carolinas that could be impacted over the next several days. We're bringing some impending danger that could be occurring for portions of the Carolinas. Hybrid storm alert. So let's go ahead and find out what's going on. So taking a look at what's going on out there right now across the tropics, this is a water mid-level water vapor satellite imagery. Not really much ongoing across the entirety of the Atlantic Basin. We are watching a couple of systems out there. Uh, one that is now currently centered to the well to the north of the Bahamian Islands near Bermuda at this point. This was a system that the Hurricane Center was monitoring prior, but development chances are now at 0%, so this is no longer of concern. And then we're watching a few additional tropical waves off the coast of Africa. These are not expected to develop dry upper level conditions and upper level winds are expected to prevent any significant development of these systems over the next several days. But as these move off towards the west, these could bring some much needed rain to portions of the island chain, Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, places like that. But all else is quiet for now. So we're talking about this potential coastal low that could be occurring over the next several days, developing off the coast of Florida and Georgia. Now this coastal low is set to move off towards the north and northeast over the next several days. This coastal low has not formed as of yet, but as this graphic illustrates, we notice that there is going to be a tightening of those pressure fields, a lowering of those pressures, into the mid to low thousand millibar range and as it ejects off towards the north it is going to bring a lot of heavy rain to the carolinas that lighter shade of green and the darker shade of green in especially the coastal carolinas up to near columbia indicates the potential for some heavy rainfall we're talking over an inch and a half of rain potentially even two to four potentially localized four and a half to five inch rain amounts, depending on where these heavier convective bands set up. Now, this is a hybrid area of low pressure, meaning this will probably not be a fully tropical system, probably more of a cold core system. We'll talk about why here in a second, but just be aware that this will be occurring in this weekend and heading into the Memorial Day itself. So this could bring some adverse conditions to your local area. And we'll talk about the impacts here in a second. So taking a look here at our source region for where this low is expected to develop, we notice that there's really not much there right now. We notice that they're actually the blow up of thunderstorms well off the coast here near Bermuda. This is actually associated with the old tropical system that we were monitoring now there is a blow up of convection just off the coast of Florida and it's hard to tell whether or not this is actually going to be the main impetus for the area of low pressure to develop. My hunch is it would not be as we're expected to get low pressure development probably sometime by Friday into Friday evening and continuing into the weekend. But the stage is being primed, the moisture is being moistened or the, the atmosphere is being moistened uh, with all of this convection in this area. So certainly the atmosphere is primed and ready to go to generate thunderstorms in this area. But the big question is going to be, what does the upper level wind environment have in for this system really? And where is it going to go? Let's go ahead and answer those questions now. So if we actually take a look here at the GFS forecast, we're looking at the 10 meter winds. So just above the surface and the mean sea level pressure. This is starting out as of this morning at 5 a.m. We'll go ahead and run this forward. Now we notice that in the forecast, this is uh, valid as of tomorrow afternoon and evening. We start to get a prolonged period of increased flow just above the surface here at about 10 meters. So very close to the surface. We get enhanced flow here down there. And this is off the coast of the Carolinas. We're getting about 30 to about 35 mile per hour winds. So this is nearing the gale force wind criteria or otherwise tropical storm, low end tropical storm force winds just off the coast of the Carolinas by tomorrow afternoon and early evening. 
We'll go ahead and continue this forward, and this is by the May 26th at 18Z, so just about two o'clock in the afternoon, and we start to get more of that flow. Now you see the mean sea level pressure contours, they are now kind of curling in and lowering, indicating an area of low pressure with strong tropical storm force winds just off the coast of the Carolinas. Pretty strong winds even off the coast of Florida, about 30 to 40 mile per hour winds there just off the coast of the Florida Peninsula there on the eastern side. Even some 20 mile per hour winds offshore near Tampa. Still around 40 miles per hour just off the coast there of the Outer Banks. So this is actually fairly similar. It somewhat reminds me of Hurricane Nicole last year, how you got this very big fetch of just this upper level disturbance that mixed in with a lower level disturbance and you kind of got this big fetch of onshore flow well that's pretty much exactly what's happening here except the flow is going to be a little bit less <laughs> onshore so you won't have as much of those beach hazards along the florida peninsula especially on the western coast or i'm sorry the eastern coast but we continue to roll this forward and eventually by the 27th here at around 2 in the morning, we start to see a nicely developed area of low pressure off the coast here of South Carolina moving inland at this point. Now the inland direction is mostly caused by an upper level disturbance that is going to be sitting out here near Mississippi and Alabama and it's going to kind of pinwheel this system inland. And actually, we notice that on the GFS, that's exactly what happens. This makes a pseudo, in air quotes, landfall um, with sustained winds closer to the center, around 40 miles per hour there. So could this be a tropical system? Possibly. I would say that more likely this won't be. And for that reason, we're going to go ahead and look at why I say it won't be. So here's the main issue that we're looking at in terms of why I say this system won't be a fully tropical system. For that, we're looking here at the 300 millibar winds off the GFS forecast. And we notice that all these arrows here that are colored, uh, this indicates at least some pretty strong upper level flow. So generally what we're looking at here is as we move forward over the next several days, the flow is at least somewhat relaxed through tomorrow. There's not a tremendous amount of flow across this area, which means that overall the shear is somewhat light. However, we switch this out to later in the day tomorrow and into the early morning. Then on Friday, we notice that this actually changes. You notice more arrows here indicating at least 20 to 30 knots of flow in the upper levels. And this is indicating to me that we're going to have moderate to strong shear overrunning the system. And we also notice that the arrows are generally out of the southerly pointing to the northerly direction, meaning that they're not going to be in line with the storm's motion and that will induce shear as well. So the system, not only is it going to be moving um, at a relatively decent pace it's going to be sheared and you can kind of see these shear vectors increase throughout the day on friday meaning that there is virtually no chance for this to develop into a significant tropical cyclone with a significant wind threat so wind is not my biggest concern but we do notice that there is sufficient divergence we notice that the winds here going into the Carolinas are blowing one way and you can see the winds out here in the southwestern Atlantic are blowing the other way. This indicates that there's going to be some pretty decent upper level divergence, meaning thunderstorms are likely to erupt in this area, bringing with it the potential for some heavy rainfall and flooding concerns. And we're going to go ahead and take a look and break down that threat right now. So as we were just talking about, some of that heavy rainfall is going to be making its way into the Carolinas. So we're looking here off of the GFS total accumulated precipitation. And we'll just go ahead and let this play throughout the next several days. This is through early tomorrow afternoon around 2 o'clock. We notice that the heaviest rain is sitting off the Carolina coast. There is no rain. It seems to be rain-free for the Carolinas throughout the day, uh, at least the early part of tomorrow. Now, as we head into Friday 
and into Friday morning and afternoon, we will see that the rain starts to spread inland and we start to get precipitation along the Carolina and Georgia coastline. And then eventually this will spread inland further. And as we head out to Friday and, or later through the day Friday into the Memorial Day weekend itself, we notice that there is going to be a plethora of heavy rainfall for portions of Carolina, for both North Carolina and South Carolina, into portions of Georgia as well. 14 inches off the coast there of South Carolina. That is a, a lot of heavy rainfall. And again, these rainfall amounts aren't going to be an exact, you know, that's how much you're going to get and that's it. Uh, again, places could receive more, places could receive a little less. It just kind of depends on kind of the randomness of the thunderstorms. Uh, but overall, between three inches close to Myrtle Beach there, near three inches near Savannah, near three inches all the way up along the South Carolina-Georgia border. Again, the Outer Banks about two inches there. So it is going to be a very wet one for sure. I wouldn't call it a 100% total washout, but it does seem like that there is going to be a lot of heavy rainfall and the potential for gusty winds as well. So how gusty could it get? Let's go ahead and figure that out right now. So now taking a look here at our high resolution forecast model, we'll go ahead and run this forward. This is valid as of today at 8 a.m. We'll run this forward in time. We notice that it's pretty quiet for several days. And then here's our system starting to develop. This only goes out through the end or through the beginning of the morning on the 26th here. So the beginning of the morning on Friday, we notice that our system begins to pick up steam and we actually have a fair bit amount of wind along the coast. So it is definitely going to be gusty. And if this is not a tropical system, I do suspect that we will see wind advisories hoisted for the coastline as we progress throughout the day tomorrow, given the fact that these winds here, especially along the coast, could be upwards of just near tropical storm force uh, likely near gale force winds here along the entirety of the South Carolina coastline, the Outer Banks, and even into Georgia with some pretty gusty winds there. And this will continue to spread inland as we progress throughout the rest of Friday as well. So needless to say, it is going to be certainly very breezy. It is going to be gusty, even if this is not a tropical cyclone in nature. This will bring impacts similar to a low-end tropical storm. So for that reason, we are calling this two for everyone in the Carolina coastline, really from about Jacksonville, North Carolina, all the way down to near Savannah, Georgia, down the Interstate 95 corridor, uh, just before the Florida, Georgia border. We're going to ask everyone to prepare as if there was a low end tropical storm approaching. Again, this does not mean, oh my God, the world is ending. This just simply means take your precautions as if a low-end tropical storm would occur. Although I do not think this will be tropical in nature, you still have to respect this as a low-end tropical storm given the heavy rain and the wind that is likely to be impacting this area. And certainly we're going to be keeping up to date on the system as well. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless to everyone out there. Stay safe and I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.